So here's a case history. Uh, we're almost done here. 400, 100 horsepower motor, two speed, one winding um, motor uh, used in a cooling tower application at a utility. And we're just gonna kind of bounce through here. Four of the six leads were blown off when it came into us. So we only had two leads left connected. In this particular motor, it's a, it's a two-speed, one winding variable torque. So here are your lead combinations. So typically they're gonna start at um, low speed. Four, five, six is open and you got power to one, two, and three. And then when you switch to high speed, one, two, three are joined through contactors and four, five, and six then are applied to line. So in the case of this motor, we can conclude that the failure occurred while in high speed because we have leads one, two, five, and six blown off and leads three and four are okay. In the low speed configuration, leads four, five, and six are open, right? So if you have open leads, they can't blow off. So it had to be in a high speed configuration when those leads blew off. Um, so that's what we concluded just from looking at that information and nothing else. So then as we dug into the motor further, um, we saw grease coming out of the motor, quite a bit of heat damage. We couldn't tell what was going on yet. Uh, internally, we had a dislodged coil. So I'm thinking, okay, transient surge, something's going on. And we had vaporizing of connections on the connection end. Another strange thing, that doesn't normally happen. So triggering some thoughts in our head. We continue to look, the bearing was destroyed and the seal was rubbed because the bearing was destroyed. It caused heat to the shaft and it caused all this damage so that then the rotor was dragging the stator. So this thing was really a basket case. And, but what we noticed on the rotor was it only drug about a third to half of the rotor OD. So think about this, if a bearing drops and the rotor is now rubbing, the rotor OD should be completely rubbed, not half of the rotor OD. So a lot of things to just think about and try to figure out. Customer explained the motor had noticeable bearing noise, but it was allowed to run even after better advice from us and their predictive people. They just kept it going uh, and they didn't shut it down. And then it failed shortly after the bearing failure allowed the rotor to drag the stator and so on, causing more damage. Bearing failure is not related to the winding failure, meaning one did not cause the other. They were like two disconnected types of failure. The rotor and stator lamination were drug of this damage was not related to the leads being blown off. So we had all these different things that were rabbit trailing us in different directions and trying to figure this out. Additionally, the rotor will only drug half of the circumference, like I said, so very confusing, but a lot of things going on. So unraveling the mystery in the chain of events, the information questions that we asked, and the motor was running good for about two and a half years. Customer notices a rough, noisy bearing, but chooses not to investigate, and they just continue to let it run. That was a separate issue. The failure occurs shortly after, you know, when they knew it had a rough bearing and it tripped differential relays, which indicates some kind of a phase imbalance. The bearing had to continue to fail as it was not caused by the winding failure again. It didn't, it didn't, uh, that failure didn't relate to the bearing. Physical evidence suggests the motor had an issue while transitioning from low to high speed. So we're looking at all these things based on the leads, the configuration, the damage in the winding. The rotor stator drag was caused by the bearing failure only. Bearing failure also caused the shaft to bend and that, now that's why the rotor was only dragging on one side because there was a bend. And so picture the rotor has a bow in it. It's only gonna hit the high side as it goes around and only one area of the rotor. So conclusions and improvements. Customer ended up discovering they had an issue with their three-phase contactors from low to high. And the evidence pointed to that direction. The bearing and winding failure happened coincidentally at the same time, unrelated to each other. No other findings were there to be able to connect those two. Customer connected the bearing RTDs. They actually started measuring and monitoring them and to give them some kind of a warning and, a, and, <clears throat> and then preventing a potential future catastrophic issue. They had some new rules that they put together when they had a noisy bearing 
supporting that with vibration data and then acting on it. Due to the extensive damages present, the motor was junked out. It was so damaged that it couldn't, it could have been repaired, but it wasn't economical. If measures were taken prior to this with some of the things that happened, the motor would be running today and the motor was replaced. So all of these issues were preventable. So determining the correct cause of failure could be a real challenge. It can be like this maze. The cause of failure journey can lead you in all kinds of different directions. Asking the right questions, digging into the facts is really important. If the mindset is focused on discovery of the actual cause, there is always a way to prevent any reoccurrence from happening in the future.